Now this section is where we start to talk about measures of dispersion. You might see the word dispersion in your book. Um, think about the word dispersion. What does it mean? It means uh, to disperse, which means to spread out or to, to see how much something is spread. When you, when you find a measure of dispersion, which is what we're talking about in this section, we're trying to find a way to figure out how spread out or how dispersed our data is. So that's kind of some background info on what the word dispersion means in terms of statistics because I know you're going to read your book. It's going to talk about measures of dispersion. And a lot of students were like, what's that? It's just trying to figure out how spread out our data is. And so in this section we're going to talk about finding the range of a data set and also the variance of a data set and we'll get some practice calculating it and then we'll have some other uh, some other definitions in future sections to talk about it also. So we want to measure the spread of our data and let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say we have a data set uh, which is the age of people in a room. Right, so we go to a party or something and we uh, we go and we ask everybody, how, how old are you, how old are you, how old are you? And uh, we get the following data set. Uh, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 17, 18, 19. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people in our birthday party or whatever it is. And, we have one 15-year-old, two 16-year-olds, three 17-year-olds, one 18-year-old, one 19-year-old. Let me ask you a question. Do you think this data is highly dispersed or do you think it's spread out? Um, and what I mean by that is when you look at the values there, do they look bunched up or do they look really spread out? Well, you know, at first glance you might say, well, they're kind of spread out. I mean, I have a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old and a 17-year-olds and 18 and 19, so that's kind of spread out. But what about the four-year-olds? What about the 39-year-olds? What about the 24-year-olds? I mean, I don't have any values significantly outside of that upper teenage range. I really don't. So to contrast this, let me uh, do the same experiment. So this is sort of like party number one. So let's say party one. Now let's look at party Number two, what would that data set look like if I just happened to, to do a comparison here? So again, I'm going to choose eight people at random. I get a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 12-year-old, 17, 20, 22, 24, and 28. All right, which one of these data sets from party one or party two, notice I have eight different people in each one of them. Which one of these parties do you think is more spread out? Well, to me, it looks like number two is much more spread out because I have a much wider range of people that are attending that party. I have some kids. I have some very young preteens. I have a teenager. I have some early 20-year-olds, and I have some people in their upper 20s. So if I had to calculate the mean of party number two, it, I'm just eyeballing it. The mean is probably going to be somewhere around 20 years old or 19 years old. And these values are going to be dispersed or have dispersion around that mean that seems to be greater than party number one. Because if I had to calculate the mean of this, which I'm not going to do now, but if I did, the mean probably would be around 17 or so. And I've got, you know, some people slightly below 17 and some people slightly above 17, but it seems to be more compressed. It seems to be more tightly grouped about the mean in party number one than party number two. So that's what we mean when we talk about dispersion of data. It means how spread out is it, especially when you compare it to the mean of the data. And so we have two examples here to show that. So how do you think we would measure that? I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of talking, and I know that you all agree that we can look at these data sets and we can agree, yeah, number two seems to be more spread out or more dispersed than number one. But in statistics, we don't want to just talk about it and say, yeah, this one looks different. We want to calculate something, and we want to find a number, some number that we could calculate that would reflect that the first party or the first group of data seems to be more tightly compacted, especially when you consider its mean, uh, than number two. How do we do that? So there's a couple of ways to do it. The simplest way, the way that you don't really use too often, but the very simplest way, is I can find something called the range of the data the range of the data, right? So the word is range you want to key on here. What would that be? That is the difference between the largest and smallest values.
All right, so what it's literally telling me is one way to figure out how spread the data is would just be to look at the smallest value in the data set and subtract, that's what difference means, subtract the largest from, you know, the, the smallest, from my, the largest minus the smallest, you're going to get a number, and that's telling you how spread apart that data is because you're looking at the endpoints of the data and you're doing the subtraction. So clearly, if we do a difference between this guy here, we're going to get a number, and a difference between these endpoints here, then we'll be able to tell that party number two is the one that's more spread out. And that is a really quick and dirty way to figure out what data is more spread out. Um, so let me give you an example of that. So let's say, uh, without using the same numbers that we have up here, what if we have uh, 4, 3, 7, 2, 6, 8, and 5? And these could be anything you want. This could be, you know, the height of pen, the length of pencils in my desk in centimeters, or it could be the ages of people, whatever. But I've, I've gathered this data, and I would like to figure out how dispersed it is. And so we can calculate the range by, me, by being the largest data, which in this case is 8 minus the smallest, and the smallest is 2. So in this case, the range is equal to 6, right? So on a test or on a quiz, if you're ever asked to calculate the range of a data set, or if you're reading your book and you come across a term that's talking about the range of your data set, you know that it's a very simple, very uncomplicated idea. You're just measuring the endpoints. It tells you how spread apart your data set is. But let me ask you, there should be a drawback to the range uh, that we've calculated here that if you think hard enough, you will come to the same conclusion. There's a big drawback to using this. I mean, some people would say, well, this is great. If I calculate the range of this, I mean, the range of this data set here, 28 minus 24 is going to be, tw I'm sorry, 28 minus 4 is going to be 24. That's the range of this data set. The range of this data set would be 19 minus 15, which would give you 4. So then you can calculate the ranges and you can see how dispersed and how spread apart the data is. So what are we talking about any, anymore? What do we care? We've already solved the problem. There's a major disadvantage to using range and that is if your data has any outliers, right? What an outlier is, is it just means that most of your data is over here and for some reason you have one oddball data point way far away from everybody else. He is part of the data set. You can't just throw him away but it's kind of like atypical. It's not something that you would expect and it's just ha it did happen, but it, it's not representative of the majority of your data. So should you, should you totally abandon all of your calculations and skew them all because you have one data outlier? What I mean by that is, uh, you know, for instance, look at, uh, look at this, let's say this is the uh, ages of people at a birthday party, all right? So I've calculated the range, I get six. So these make sense. I have a five-year-old there, I have an eight-year-old there, six-year-old, two-year-old, seven-year-old, three-year-old, and a four-year-old, and I've calculated the range, and it tells me how spread apart my data is. Now let's say that on a different day I go to a birthday party and all these people show up, but Grandpa shows up, and he's 89 years old, okay? So Grandpa's the only person with an age above eight years old. He's clearly an outlier. Most of the people in the room at that party are young children. So we're studying it, we're learning about it, it's, it's distribution among kids. But then grandpa shows up and he's 89 years old and he, you have to count him because he is in the room, but he's an outlier, he's not representative of everybody else. So if I calculate the range, I'll have 89 year old grandpa minus the uh, two year old here and I'm gonna get a huge range. So it's gonna look like that data is real nice and spread out, but really what it is is everybody's kinda over here and then you have one outlier way over there. You need to be careful whether you're doing statistics in class or whether you're doing it for your job, career, presentation, studying, whatever. If you have outliers, you need to try to identify them and at least label them as outliers so that people reading your work know that you realized that there was this one person or one data point that kind of skewed everything. You may even rerun the analysis without the outlier just to see if it changes anything. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.